Dateline with anchors Jane Pauley and Stone Phillips. Dateline NBC was an American television show that aired weekly on the channel NBC. They were fairly well known for their investigative journalism regarding legal cases, criminal cases, controversies, and topics of general interest. In November of 2004, however, they struck gold with a new series entitled To Catch a Predator. And now, Dangerous Web. Here is Stone Phillips. Good evening. Don't talk to strangers. It's a basic rule of safety every parent tells their child. But if there's a computer in your home, it's possible that your children have been talking to strangers. Tonight, we're going to show you just how dangerous it can be to let your child surf the web alone, and how quickly a stranger, maybe a sexual predator, can go from chatting with your teen in cyberspace to knocking on your front door. How easily can it happen? We found out in a Dateline hidden camera investigation. We want to warn you, some of what you're about to see and hear tonight is explicit. Here's Chris Hansen. To Catch a Predator was a show that revolved around the Dateline team partnering with the online watchdog group called Perverted Justice. They would troll online chat rooms pretending to be an underage teen, wait for men to solicit that underage teen for sexual activity, start a dialogue with the Predator, which would ultimately culminate in the Predator driving to the supposed underage teen's home with the prospect of a sexual encounter. Once at the home, though, they would find no underage teen simply a decoy pretending to be one. And this man, Chris Hansen, who to this day is still widely recognized as the godfather of internet predator hunting. For the first few seasons of To Catch a Predator, Hansen would confront the men arriving at the home with a few main goals. Number one, to understand their behavior. Some of the men who arrived at these sting operations were, all in all, losers in life for sure. However, there were quite a few with very prominent positions in the community, such as school teachers. What was the uh, lesson plan for tonight? I'm sorry. Sorry for what? I thought, I thought this was a joke. You thought what was a joke? I should have known better. What did you think it was? Truly, truly a setup. And why would somebody try to do a setup like this? To catch people that shouldn't be talking to teenagers people like you definitely well you know this is the first time i've done this. the first time with the young, underage person yes while he claims his fantasy of teaching work. a young boy that sexual ropes was all a joke what he does for a living is nothing to laugh at i teach math and what grade do you teach sixth seventh and eighth grade sixth seventh and eighth grade pastors Finally, an officer's taser knocks him to the ground. After he's arrested, he's taken in for questioning. This man with the incredibly vulgar chat reveals something that, ironically, no longer surprises us. I was a man in the shirt. And those who had everything to lose from a family perspective. I gotta tell you something. And I'm going to tell you just straight up right now. Yeah. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Okay. We're doing a story on adults eating children. And since you have your child here, I'm not going to pursue this. Okay. But I think you know what you were doing here, don't you? No, I was just doing this in the take a, take a boy out to lunch you met on the internet. Yeah, I'm sorry. My point is because your child is here, I think it'd be best if you just went ahead and left. Yeah, I agree. I never going to do this again. And of course, Frag is talking to the police saying, you know, this has got to be a different sort of arrest. Rob, we're going to send this guy out. We're not going to interview him because he got his kid. Sir, right there. You come here. You come here. Let go of the child. 
as gently as the female officer scooped him up, he still had to see his father get arrested. Please give me my son, please. Can we please have my son, please? You got to remember that these guys... Wife, children, and friends, and even those with political power. We'll talk about one of those in a little bit. Two, to expose this kind of behavior in the hopes that it would serve as a warning for parents to keep an eye on their children and monitor who their children were talking to online. The rise of To Catch a Predator came hot on the heels of the tragic murder of 13-year-old Casey Woody at the hands of a man she had been speaking to online. With online and internet safety thoroughly embedded in the minds of the American public, it was no surprise that people absolutely ate this show up. Also astonishing even to the creators of the show were the amount of men who were so enamored by a fake underage teen that they would even show up to the sting house. Even those who believed that it might be a sting operation. This not only solidified predatory internet behavior as a definite problem, but also revealed tactics predators would use to gain access to children and how parents in turn could counteract it. Number three, to embarrass them. And what he does when he shows up will be hard for you to believe. You want to explain yourself? Well, I would love to go for a ride sometime. Well, I'd, I'd love to take you. Where exactly were you going to uh, take her in that truck of yours? Well, I was just going to take her around, you know, just see, you know, see certain places, you know, and talk like, to her. So, Lieutenant. What's up? What are we investigating tonight? Nothing much. I just wanted to talk, I swear to you. You know, she... How were you going to use the condoms in the I wasn't going to use them at all. You got them in your pocket. Some cry, some argue, some run. And an officer shoots him with a taser gun. Only one probe stays attached, so the taser is unable to shock him and drop him to the ground. Some simply shut down or accept it. Goddamn ground! Oh, please, Get sir! Please, sir! Get on the ground! Let me see your hand. Oh, Lord. Oh, boy. You did fine. Oh, Lord. But without fail, each one of the men caught on to catch a predator was subjected to a great deal of deserved embarrassment for their slimy, grimy behavior in front of the entire country. And as the show grew in popularity, that potential shame and embarrassment became a genuine concern for predators who were trolling chat rooms looking for kids, many of them becoming familiar with the show and knowing there was a possibility they were walking right into it. Do you ever watch television? Yeah. You ever watch Dateline? Dateline? Dateline NBC? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen our stories on computer predators? Yeah, I've seen them. This is one of them. Oh, no. So even after seeing our previous investigations, watching men being confronted and arrested, he wasn't discouraged from doing the very same thing. And as you'll see later, he's not the only one. For the first few installments of To Catch a Predator, the men would show up to the sting house, be confronted by Hansen, and then be permitted to leave and go home. Their information would then be forwarded to the local police department should they choose to pursue the individual. Later installments, though, and for a majority of the show's life cycle, law enforcement would be present on scene and immediately after the Predator's interview with Hansen, would be swiftly arrested and taken back to the police station where they would be subject to more shame, embarrassment, and criminal charges. As the doctor looks for a towel, he spots Dateline's camera crew. I gotta take off. Sir? Sir? Yeah. I need to talk to you for a minute. He runs, but he doesn't get very far. Why don't you explain that to me? After the 43-year-old makes a quick exit, Police arrest him and try to keep him quiet. But Murray cannot seem to stop crying. <laughs> Shh. I can't. I gotta get the truck back. Now, Matt, I need to talk to you for a minute. Matt, why don't you have a seat right over there? But talking is not what he has in mind. Hands up. 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 Hands up.
hands up. Lobbies, please. Hands up now. Yeah, follow the direction. Push your hands up now. He doesn't respond fast enough. The result is a teaser shot. Since its inception, the show has gained almost legendary status for many, with clips from old installments readily found online gaining hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of views. Watching despicable individuals be confronted, questioned, shamed, embarrassed, and arrested seemed to never get old, as did the reactions from various internet predators upon realizing they were caught. Get on the bell. And place him under arrest. Here, I'll get handcuffs. One individual, however, stands out among the others. Assistant District Attorney for Coffin County, using big right? picks. 56-year-old Lewis William Conrad Jr. is a prosecutor in a neighboring county. Um, uh, whatever you'd like to do. He's been chatting on the phone with an actor hired by Dateline and online with a decoy from Perverted Justice. Um, and there's little doubt about what's on his mind. He sent penis pictures. Frag from Perverted Justice William alerts Conrad. police. Lewis Conrad Jr. was the district attorney in Kaufman County, Texas for over 20 years. In 2002, he attempted to run to be the 86th state district judge but failed. Afterwards, he became the chief felony ADA in Rockwall County. In 2006, Conrad became involved in sexually charged online chats with who he believed to be a 13-year-old boy. In reality, on the other end of the screen was perverted justice. Throughout the chats, Conrad portrayed himself as a 19-year-old university student. In reality, he was 56 at the time. He sent pictures of what he claimed to be his private region to the supposed 13-year-old. Around this time, perverted justice began to try to engage Conrad on the phone by using a decoy to play the 13-year-old. However, shortly after this, Conrad stopped responding to messages and text. Information on the social media profiles he was using to speak to the underage boy would slowly start to disappear. Worried that Conrad was deleting evidence, law enforcement, including local police and SWAT teams, as well as Perverted Justice and Dateline NBC, descended on his home on November 5, 2006. The officers line up in formation and head to the back of the house. Then we hear a faint crack as the officers force their way in. While SWAT teams were combing the house, they ran into Conrad in a hallway. He was holding a Browning 380 handgun. After saying the words, I'm not going to hurt anyone, Conrad shot himself in the head. The backlash from this incident affected almost all parties involved. Law enforcement, perverted justice, and Dateline NBC. Lawsuits and accusations were filed and settled. And about a year later, To Catch a Predator would be quietly canceled by NBC, marking the end of the beginning of a whole genre of crime content. In the years since To Catch a Predator's dismissal from the NBC lineup, it has gained almost legendary following among true crime enthusiasts and internet safety enthusiasts, and has resonated so deeply with some that smaller organizations and even individuals have taken the format and decided to try their hand at their own stings in the decade following the show's departure. While these lack the production value and network backing of Datelines to catch a predator, this new school of internet predator hunters often prove themselves more resourceful and more relentless. What you mean to somebody? Uh, on the internet? On the internet. Okay, and how old did they tell you they were? Uh, I'm not sure. You, you're absolutely sure? No, because they told you the age twice. This is if I end up showing it to the police. So that we have evidence that you showed up. Also, so if the police get involved, you can't say we hurt you or touched you. It's for your protection and mine. Okay, I just want to have a, si a simple conversation. You apologize, you understand what you did was wrong, and you get out of here. Okay. All right, let's keep it simple. We don't have to overcomplicate this. Five minutes later. You sure that's what you want to do? You, you understand you committed multiple felonies. When, 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 when he told you he was... Just help me comprehend why you didn't block him. That's all I want to know. 
Well, I was gonna meet him. I just wanted to talk to him. Oh. I wasn't gonna do anything. Like so why, why, to... why, why'd you tell him you wanted to have? Uh... I've never done that. I wasn't gonna do that. But why would you say it in the messages? I didn't. He said. It. No, no, no. He, he said, "Are you?" He said, "Do you have any?" You were talking from the beginning. Five minutes later. You... And what are you planning on doing with this footage? You're not gonna post what it you... online or anything like that. I told you it's for protection. Okay, no, but I'm saying maybe you have a YouTube channel. Or no, no, like no, no, no. YouTube. Why they do this on YouTube? I don't know. That's actually a good idea. I've I've never done YouTube. No. Is is why why YouTube? No, I just do something out there. But you can continue. Do, do you think? Do you do you think I'd be a good YouTuber? I don't know. Cause I I catch a lot of, but usually I work with the police if they don't cooperate. But I've never done YouTube in my life. Do you, do you think I, I would make a good uh, know, YouTube exposure? The... Okay. So my question is, when he told you he was why didn't you block him? Well, I actually didn't believe you. A few moments later. Get out of here. Look, I'm going to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't touch me, bro. Yo, get the camera Look, yo. I'll be honest here. with you. If you touch him again, you're going to get dropped. Look, See, that's exactly that's, that's exactly what I mean by sometimes people like you get this. Right? I'm if I wanted to be, if, if I wanted to drop your ass right now, I have every right to do it because you assaulted my cameraman. But the whole of this is that's not what I'm trying to do. Okay, I just want you guys to leave me alone. Okay, why would you try to have something? Huh? That's not what I was doing. I just don't understand why you thought it was a good idea. Uh, pretty much the conversation. This is the conversation. He he discusses. He's into just um right here. We tell him on go press play. Is that okay? I usually get with older guys. He goes, you got more pictures? Yes. So that's the decoy. He's, he's not actually. We don't use actual. Okay. But uh, you could pass as one. He goes, ha, thanks, which is nationality, Indian. Nice, I'm Italian, I love Indian. Yeah, so the video, it's like, is, yeah, it's like a 30, 40 minute video. I could email, airdrop, whatever. Okay, yeah, so that, in, that um, video is probably gonna go to the Tekka Bureau. I'll yeah. give you guys an email, you guys forward it there. 100%. And then they'll probably, not probably, but they're, probably gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna follow up with you guys, yeah. okay? Okay. Um, I'm gonna call my supervisor real quick, let me know what's going on, and then I'll let you guys know in a second, okay? No problem, thank you, you so much. No now, we can all agree that the less people out there trying to solicit children, the better. However, due to the barrier for entry to do these kinds of sting operations, and to make this type of content so low, essentially only needing a phone, the types of people who are doing these stings and uploading these videos can vary from the very thorough and very professional to the not-so-professional. Call, call your stepdad. Alright, I'm asking you, call your stepdad. <laughs> All right, you know, you're gonna get, listen, you can run, but you're gonna get posted in front of tens of thousands of people, you understand? You're gonna get exposed to the entire world. You're gonna get exposed in front of everybody. Let me be careful with that, okay? You're gonna go to jail, my boy. You're literally gonna get exposed in front of everyone. It's okay, let him go, let him go. Let him go, let him go. <laughs> Yo, you got that on camera? Let him go, let him go, let him go. Yo! Some groups, however, are much more thorough and will go through the steps necessary to legitimize their organization, such as being in contact with local law enforcement, knowing what information will be valuable to get a conviction later down the line, and what won't be admissible and even providing resources to the subjects to get psychological help if they choose to. One of the more notable of these groups in recent years is Pop Squad, or the Prey on Predator Squad run by a man named Shane Erdman, who calls himself Incognito, or Nito for short. What up, bro? Good. How you doing? Good. How you been? Pretty good. Haven't seen you in a long time. I'm not here to hurt you. Whoa. Keep your hand away from me. Yeah, if you put your hand in my arm, reach again, you're gonna go to sleep. Now listen. I'm not an officer, and I'm not here to hurt you. I just want to have a conversation with you. Yeah. All right? So what are you doing here tonight? I'm just coming to CVS. You're just coming to CVS? Yeah. You sure about that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. You sure you're not here to meet nobody? No. You do know that I know that's bullshit, right? Okay. No, it's not okay. No, I don't know. What I, you're I, here I, for is super not I okay. Oh, no, I'm actually, I'm, no, I just want to talk to you seriously. All right, but so yeah, honestly, talk to me seriously. Because actually coming here, I was having second thoughts. Because I, I wasn't going to do it. Stay okay. outside of my arm reach. Okay, here. You already no, raised your hand the wrong here. way? Here. Uh, All right, cool. Can I put my hands behind my back? Yep, yeah. fine. All right. So I was already, I was already having second thoughts about it. Like honestly, like I wasn't gonna do nothing. I was gonna just talk to her about it. So let's take it from the top. Yeah. Let's get out of the way. Let's get, yeah, let's get that this can way. We, just can so we we're. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Fine. Let's go near your truck. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to think I'm gonna. Like I don't want you guys to think I'm gonna. Hurt no, we're gonna go through yeah. everything. We're gonna go through everything real quick. Go ahead. You can stay near your truck. I'll stay near your truck. All right. Fine. Because I don't want to like, hurt, like say, like say anything about yourself. But you don't want to hurt or say no, anything bad. No, What's that I mean? I don't want to like make you guys think I'm like gonna do anything to you guys. All right. So from the, yeah. I know you're not doing nothing to me or yeah. him. Okay. Yeah. There, there's yeah, nothing there's, you could do. Yeah, but exactly. listen. <laughs> so listen. All right. From the top. Okay. Who I, are you here to meet? I was here to meet. I I don't know her name. What's her name? Whatever you guys. Whatever her name was. What's her name? I honestly don't. Think for a second. You were just talking to her the whole time. Circling around the parking lot and stuff, waiting, yeah. saying that you weren't here yet when you were. No, I, w I never said I wasn't here yet. Yeah, you did. You said that you're on yeah. your way, you're okay. close. When in fact you were here circling. We were watching okay. you the whole time. Okay. And I just want to let you guys know, I'm I wasn't going to do anything. You weren't going to do nothing. No. I you I, I'm did you talk you, sexual? I didn't. I didn't talk sexual. I talked about doing. I talked about doing something. But you I about you doing didn't talk sexual. Well, I didn't say I was gonna like do anything to i said i was gonna yes or no nico did you yes, talk sexual yes, sure yes. did you grab the condoms you didn't even have time no. did you do you have them i know, I know. so that was a lie okay well i, I bought them inside i know I you bought them inside yeah, you yeah. see what i'm saying listen nico slow down i should know better and yeah what is your friends and family gonna say when they read your chat logs when they read what you were saying to what you believe to be a 13 year old little girl it's, it's not going to be good. They're going to be disappointed. Um, yeah. Do you have a little sister or a little cousin or anything yeah. like that? What would you do if somebody came out that was saying all the same exact things that you were saying? I'd be pissed. You would be pissed? Yes. That's and it? I'd, I'd, be, I'd be angry and I'd want to do something. And I, I understand what I did was wrong. You understand what you did was wrong. But you're still here. Well, I would not want to be here. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, you're only remorseful because you got caught. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That's all this yeah. is. And I'm glad that you're, you're admitting that. We are going to send you a link. What you yeah. choose to do with that link is on you. If you okay. choose to reach back out through my website and you want to do a re-meet months down the road when you're getting some help, mm -hmm. I'm open to that. Most of you guys don't do that anyway. Okay. See, you're saying okay before I even finish my sentence. This is the prime example of the bobblehead. I, I have I have a question though. So like Go ahead. So you have a website and like you, you try and help people through this. No, I don't try to help you guys at all. What okay. I'm doing is raising awareness okay. so you guys get what you really deserve. Okay. I don't want you to be confused by my tone or by me saying I'm gonna send you a link okay. that I'm really gonna help you. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Somebody probably called, as they should. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Let's see what they have to say. Yes, definitely did. How you doing, bro? Oh, you're good. Nice to meet you. What's up, man? What's going on? All right, I'm known as Nito. I don't know if you ever heard of Pop Squad, Prey on Predators. I catch predators and pedophiles around the country. Um, I'm just recording. He's trying to get away right now. I'm just recording this, man. I know you guys can't take immediate action because of how the system is anyway, but this man came out to meet with he believed to be a 13-year-old girl for sex after a whole bunch of sexual... Uh, Hey, Conversation. Talk to that dude over there. <laughs> While Incognito appears to maintain the stance that every single individual of the hundreds of individuals he's chatted with and confronted are without exception absolutely reprehensible individuals, he provides them resources to get help, and at times offers to even meet again under calmer and voluntary circumstances to see how their journey to get help is unfolding. Fox 61 Chief Investigator Brian Foley, you spent today digging into Pop Squad, figuring out how they do the work that so many people now rely on. Yeah, in my previous career, I remember looking into these guys and, and trying to find out, you know, what they did and how they did it. So I wanted to meet up with them today and, and see exactly what they did and how they did it. It was pretty cool stuff. I've been doing this for 16 and a half months. Wow, why'd you start doing it? Uh, I was curious at first. I wanted to see how many guys were actually around here because we all had the naive thought that, you know, 
we know it's out there, but it won't happen around me, it won't happen in my house. So once I saw how many there were and that I could render different results, I decided I had to keep going. All right, I gotta ask you this. Are you a victim yourself? No. Okay, you? No. <laughs> Do you contact police? No, we never reach out first. Uh, I learned early on that that creates a lot of loopholes for the defense later yep. on to possibly, you know, try to argue entrapment or yep. anything like that when you know yourself. So that, you're not working as an agent for the police. Exactly, we're not law enforcement, so that doesn't apply. So by doing that, I avoid all that. So the public makes a complaint or an officer might see somebody that's in his jurisdiction and then they reach out to the website. At that point, I give them everything they need from the first initial contact, all the chat logs, uh, the transcripts from text messaging if they went over to texting, and then I give them the raw video footage of the actual encounter. Have you had to testify yet? No. Nobody's taking anything to trial. It's airtight. Everybody takes pleas after they get as many continuances as they can. This is like the ultimate volunteer work, and you're like the ultimate witness uh, to provide all that type of information. I mean, sometimes victims and witnesses are reluctant to come forward in this type of these types of crimes. For years, and that's the thing that I see a lot. When you ask, you know, do I do I get thank yous or do I hear from you know victims? They'll tell me their story and be like, you know, I've never talked to anybody for that, but I saw your videos, and I'll get like five, six page what do the letters. Cops say to you? Um. Off camera, <laughs> off camera, you know, they're the regular dad at home and they agree with everything I do. And then on camera, it's a different story. How old your decoy? He was 19 at the time. He's 21 now. Oh, badass. How old do you look? He looks really young, but he's six feet. So the people that like believed it, it's, I mean, there's tall kids, but you know what I mean? He shaved up for the live meets though. Let me ask you this. Hmm. Why do you do it? It needs to be done. And once I started meeting a lot of cops that were saying I was doing a better job interrogating, than some of the guys that they've worked with for years. I was like, well, that's odd. You guys go to school for this, and yeah. this is all self-knowledge and things I've been into since I was a kid, long before this. So I have to do it. If what I do don't, who's gonna? Incognito will frequently confront the predators in a public area in a calm yet assertive voice, state his intentions clearly, make it clear he's not law enforcement before engaging them in a conversation that is essentially the same goals as to catch a predator did to get a glimpse into their pattern of thinking, to expose their behavior, and to embarrass them. And these channels do a fine job with that last part. But go ahead and call your wife. Put your phone on speaker. You're gonna have to let her know. And now I'm gonna speak to her. Yeah. Hey, honey, I made a big mistake. I'm here with two gentlemen. Uh, I got caught in a little sting. I, I, it's indefensible. I think you know what I'm talking about. Tell her what you were here to do. I was here to meet a boy to, you know, potentially have uh, uh, some relationship. Miss, um, you're, you're his wife, correct? Yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm making sure you find out about this so you can protect your children. Your husband was caught trying to have sex with a 14-year-old little boy. We just caught him right now. He brought condoms. He got sexual. He told the little boy he wanted to touch him. He wanted to kiss him. And the list goes on and on and on. He got very sexual. And, and we call him, we're part of an organization that catches child predators. And he just got caught in a sting operation trying to meet a little boy for sex. Two years older than your youngest son. And I figured I would let you know so as his wife, you could handle it appropriately. And it's a very sad situation. He was going to ruin a little child's life. I don't what's, know what to say. What's that? I'm sorry? She doesn't know what to say. I don't know what to say. But it's absolutely disgusting. You are going to ruin a little child's life. Do you know if your husband has ever done something like this before? No. So it'd be his first time as far as you are aware? Yes. Yeah. Wow. And, and are you aware that he, your, your husband's been engaging in sexual relationships with men? Cheating on you? She's aware. 
Where are you? I'm right. He's at the apartment where he was trying to meet the boy. I'm on 73rd and Park, honey. Where? In the city or? No, right by our house. In our instead of instead of calling the cops, I'm just letting you know as a courtesy call, so that you can do whatever you want to do moving forward with with the marriage, however you want to handle the situation. It's such a sad situation. It was gonna ruin a little child's life, and you know the only reason why I didn't call the cops is because he's cooperating. I figured you know maybe if if I let the wife know, maybe you could do something about it get him therapy, get him help. That's if you don't want to get a divorce. It's just a disgusting situation. No, 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 not. Okay, give, give me 15 setups. Go. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. However, even if you do everything right, take every precaution, film everything, make your intentions and purposes crystal clear, at the end of the day, human beings are unpredictable. And that unpredictability means you never really know how someone will react when confronted. On the evening of October 19, 2018, 20-year-old Elaine Vincent Malcolm traveled from his home in Torrington, Connecticut, 30 minutes away to Bristol, to meet who he believed was a 14-year-old boy for a potentially sexual encounter. Instead of meeting a 14-year-old boy, however, he met Pop Squad, and was confronted by Incognito. When the encounter had concluded, Malcolm, well aware that within the next few days his actions would be exposed to all of his friends and family, drove back to his parents' home in Torrington and committed suicide by hanging himself. When news broke of Malcolm's suicide the following day, Pop Squad quickly removed the video showing their confrontation with him. Many who were aware of the situation took to Malcolm's Facebook to comment things like, burn in hell, and good riddance. These comments were publicly able to be seen by Malcolm's friends and family. Under the YouTube video outlining the whole situation regarding Elaine Malcolm, which is independent of Pop Squad but re-uploads their content, the uploader says, Personally, I have no sympathy for that guy. Yes, it's tragic that someone committed suicide, but when you see what he did and what he was going to do, it's really hard to feel bad for someone that was willingly going to take advantage of a child. I don't care what kind of person people thought he was, or even who he was to begin with. Again, when you willfully try to take advantage of a child for sex, or even attempt to, I personally think you're a disgusting piece of dog crap, and anything you say should be ignored and disregarded. Comments under the video primarily echoed this sentiment. The problem took care of itself. Awesome. Not all these stories typically end with good news like that, unfortunately. As far as I'm concerned, he redeemed himself when he committed suicide. I love feel-good stories like this one. Don't you love when the trash takes itself out? Another commenter writes, Wait, are y'all actually proud that you brought a man to suicide? I understand he's a predator, but I don't think the end goal for exposing a predator should be to drive him to commit suicide. Instead, help him get better or even just contact the cops. Death is not the answer to anything at all. The responses to this comment were mixed. In response to Malcolm's suicide, NBC wrote and released an article painting Pop Squad and the groups like it as uncontrolled vigilantes, taking something into their own hands that should be handled by the authorities. In response, the internet predator hunting community labeled the article's author, Bradney Zadrozny, a pedophile apologist and predator supporter. And again, while everyone can agree that predatory behavior is absolutely reprehensible, inexcusable, and deems the highest level of legal and institutional punishment and the widest level of embarrassment and shame, the divide seems to be between those who believe that once someone is exposed as a predator, that individual's life from that moment forward has absolutely no value, and the world would genuinely be a better place if that person did not exist within it, versus those who feel like predators are not beyond redemption, provided they are adequately punished, shamed, and given proper psychological assistance and accountability. The counter to the former is that many believe it's wrong to take pleasure in the loss of any human life, and even the most despicable among us have redeeming qualities or the penchant for absolution. The counter to the latter is that for a majority of true predators, the desire to prey upon underage kids is hardwired into their brains so deeply that no amount of psychological therapy or conditioning will be able to remove it. 
which is why so many are repeat offenders. Also, by the time many of these individuals are caught, they have most likely already engaged in dozens of sexually charged conversations with minors. Whichever side you fall on probably depends on your immediate response to finding out that Alain Malcolm committed suicide. Regardless, the death of Malcolm didn't affect Pop Squad in the same way that the suicide of Lewis Conrad Jr. affected To Catch a Predator. They continued uploading videos after that, although now it seems they have ceased uploading videos altogether, mainly due to YouTube cracking down on these types of channels over the past year or two years. However, there are still a number of internet predator hunters that still upload videos to this day. It's been over 10 years since To Catch a Predator first aired, but if you type in To Catch a Predator into YouTube, you'll be greeted with a smattering of clips re-uploaded from the many installments of the series for all to enjoy. What's more is the videos themselves have hundreds of thousands if not millions of views, and the channels that upload these videos have a cult following all on their own. In 2015, the OG Predator Hunter himself returned with a new online-only series entitled Hansen vs. Predator. The premise of this series was essentially exactly the same as the original, but now is being run primarily by Chris Hansen without the ties to NBC. After a rocky start funding the project, the series kicked off on the Crime Watch Daily YouTube channel. One of the first uploads showed Hansen confronting a plumber who was at the Sting House to meet a 12-year-old girl. That video has over 29 million views as of the making of this video. Me. Is there a light switch in here? Oh, it's behind you, is that it? Come on out, Joshua. Oh, Fight over there, please. He's about to lose his lunch. Keep your hands, keep your hands right there. See, I know who you are. You know who I am? Yes. So you've seen my shows before? Yeah. After I caught this predator, the Fairfield, Connecticut cops put him under arrest. Another popular sting from this series was Hansen busting a math tutor who showed up at the sting house to meet a 13-year-old girl. As of the making of this video, that sting has over 45 million views. Again, you see how this looks. I know how it looks, and I'm a sorry. A 32-year-old guy who deals with kids all the time comes over to visit a 13-year-old girl who's alone after a discussion about smoking marijuana together. Sir, I understand this. I'm sorry. You, right? <sighs> Do you blaze? Did you blaze? Yes. You're my soulmate. You call a 13-year-old girl a soulmate? We were just talking. Come on, please. Come on, you're 32. You got nothing Buddy. else to do on a Sunday? I'm trying to watch, I'm gonna watch football. Yeah, here with a 13-year-old girl after you blazed. Only one way out, through the garage, where the Fairfield, Connecticut cops are waiting with a pair of handcuffs with his name on them. So, what about this genre, if you can call it that, is so compelling? Why are viewers so enamored by this kind of content so much that Chris Hansen can literally reboot a series that he did in 2004, use the same exact format, the same exact style, and garner arguably even more attention now than he did in the past? There are a few possible reasons. Number one, a sense of justice. Children, for good reason, are often the most protected and valued members of any community. They're vulnerable physically, emotionally, and mentally. So to see someone older, who is a functioning member of society, attempt to take advantage of a child's vulnerability for their own sick satisfaction is something that we find reprehensible. Therefore, there is a very palatable sense of justice that we derive from seeing these men exposed as the predators they are, embarrassed on national television or the internet, and finally handed off to law enforcement to begin a process that will quite literally change their lives significantly for the worse. 2. Education and Knowledge Well, I believe that this reason is probably on the smaller side of reasons people enjoy this kind of content. To Catch a Predator, and even its successors, undoubtedly give a fair bit of insight on how these kinds of people operate, the kinds of things they'll say and do, 
the method in which they'll try to meet face to face, and of course the lengths they'll go to meet an underage child. This, in turn, can assist parents in keeping a watchful eye out for these kinds of things in order to protect their children from inadvertently getting tangled up with one of these individuals. And finally, number three. The fascination with watching someone's life fall apart. The term voyeurism is quite often associated with sexual gratification. However, another definition is deriving or relating to enjoyment from seeing the pain or distress of others. And you certainly get a great deal of pain and distress with this genre of content. Put your hands behind your head. your head. Back your head. So on your knees. Both knees. So both sorry. knees. I'm, I'm really wasn't going to do that. Stand up, guys. I swear to God. In my mind is why he became so emotional. Smith later pleaded no contest to two counts. Runs out the door as soon as he sees me. He's running. And gets tackled by investigators. I'm extremely sorry, you, sir. I appreciate that. And I hope I don't go to jail or anything. Thank you. But he will end up in jail tonight. He's coming out. The police from the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office move in and arrest him. Please don't move! Lay flat, lay flat. Lay flat, lay flat. Lay flat. And we're doing a story on men who try to meet underage kids online for sex. Abdallah doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Outside, the Flagler Beach police are racing into position. Thinking he's going to run, the police come down hard. You know what? I don't want this cookie. I just want to get to the beach. Come here, just one second, sir. But generic white male won't be going to the beach today. As he heads out the back, he stumbles off the porch right into the arms of the Fort Myers Police Department. The police quickly take him down to the ground. However, this isn't to say that if you enjoy anything in the predator-catching genre, or TCAP as it's often referred to, you're some psychotic individual who gets off on the suffering and misery of other people. That's not the case at all. There is something inherently interesting about someone being publicly confronted on what was probably their deepest, darkest, most vile secret, and having that side of themselves publicly displayed. There is also something compelling about watching someone's life literally fall apart in front of your eyes. It's a genuine, unadulterated, raw emotion. And usually, when we see someone's life fall apart, there's a significant amount of empathy or sadness we feel for that individual, even if it's someone who has made bad decisions. But, with predators, as we've seen during the course of this video, typically garner little to no sympathy from the general public or viewers, as they are regarded the lowest of the low on the totem pole of those who engage in criminal activity. Someone who would take advantage of or hurt a child. So when we watch their lives fall apart, on national TV or on the internet, we can simply enjoy what we're seeing, without the strings of sympathy or guilt holding us back. Because who could feel bad for a predator? How are you tonight? Fine. Can you do me a favor and just go ahead and seat right over the other side of the bar, please? It's a little late to be prowling around these parts, huh? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Why don't you have a seat right over here for me? Actually, I want you to come here. That's what I thought. And I'm going to tell you just straight up right yeah. now. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Good. What was the uh, lesson plan for tonight? Hey, Boo. Hey. You have a seat right around that stool right there for me. You want to explain yourself? Where exactly were you going to uh, take her in that truck of yours? Do me a favor and uh, just have a seat right over there on the other side of the bar. What pizza we have tonight? Who's this? I'll get to that in a minute. Who are you? Can I use your restroom? Oh, why don't you uh, have a seat real quick? Oh, yeah, I know what this is. The only bad news about that is you're probably not going to need that type of protection. No, Chris. What are you doing? But this is the first time I've caught anyone who I know. The second Charles Lawrence walked in the door...